people like me too. Well, I don't understand what that means. Is it time to make Ooh. mouth sounds? This no. whole time? Start off with some mouth sounds? No. How would that? That would definitely make the internet extra mad at us. No, but I'm like, <clears throat> I'm eating a cookie. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Did you tweet out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sent my tweet. Okay. <laughs> Ryan has been sitting here silently the whole time. What time is it there, Ryan? <laughs> we can't hear you. Is that us or you? That's why he's been silent. That's he's me. Been, he's that been muted. Mm, that's a great no. start. No, hold up. That's a telling sign. We didn't even know you were muted until just now. I'm just saying. <laughs> Ouch. That's not very nice. Well, he he got up and got a drink, so he came back and sat down. But I, for, I forgot to press. So I forgot to press my red button. You let me push the red buttons, Ryan. A very big red button. All right. So I got three cookies, but I'm gonna save the last one. I've eaten two of them. I'm gonna save the last one for you, a show. You absolute animal! What? Just destroying <laughs> two cookies? Mm -hmm. oh. Hey, Max. What? Everyone's like, why are they delaying? Hey, Vax, good to see you. It's been a while. Whoa. That's why we're delaying, Every so Vax can be here. Exactly. Everyone's angry at me, so like they're coming in to, t <laughs> to tell me how awful of a human I am and how, how terrible it is. Does everyone know why everyone, like, wh why you're all angry at me? You have, the, uh, you have the Twitter tomorrow thing. Actually, there's some pretty interesting. So this is what I tweeted out like 48 hours ago. I said, the space launch system is billions over budget, years late, crazy expensive to fly, and not reusable. And actually, okay, back to me, back to me. Not only is it not reusable, it uses arguably, no, hang on, I have to sit up and like pretend like, there we go. It uses arguably one of the most epic reusable slash refurbishable engines ever. Yes. This thing is a work of art. I love this engine. And we're going to be dumping them into the ocean. Yep. Four, four at a time. Four at a time. Four at a time. The engine, we spent so much time and effort prior to the space shuttle trying to build what it was effectively the world's first reusable rocket engine. Is that a true statement? That's a true statement. Just a truthish statement. Tr true enough statement, right? And, you know, I, I don't know how many people know this, but like, when we went into the first space shuttle missions, it wasn't the solid motors that they were worried about. It was the space shuttle main engines. Oh yeah, there you go. How beautiful um, is that thing? Oh, it is so amazing. How beautiful oh, is that engine? God. And and uh, there's some amazing video. I think it's on YouTube somewhere. Oh, I don't we're gonna know. get flagged for pornography. <laughs> <laughs> God Almighty! Look at that! F oh. oh man! You want to talk about diamonds are a girl's can... best friend? No, mock diamonds are oh, an yeah. engineer's best friend. Jesus! Mm. God, we can just hang here and look at shuttle main oh, engine pictures. Look at you're that. okay. That's weird. You're getting. You're making Fat it weird. Mock diamonds. Sorry, I just can't help myself on these kinds. There's of this things. really great video of them doing. <laughs> In, um, a testing of the engine, and I th I, it's shot on film back in the day. I'm, I'm pretty sweating. sure. What's that? <laughs> film, right? I'm pretty sure uh, this was a black and white shot, but it was definitely done at high speed. And what? Ha so the engine starts up, and I don't know how many <laughs> frames per second, but I'm going to say 500 to 1,000, eh, probably closer that. to 1,000. So the engine starts up, and you 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 kind of see the startup transients and kind of wobbles a little bit, and then it stabilizes, and you see this this incredibly gorgeous like flame come out of the engine, stabilizes, and you get the mock yeah then you get the mock diamonds just like you see there right this beautiful flame coming down. It's a little bit wider than that shot and tilted down a little bit, so you actually see multiple mock diamonds form out of the engine. It's like oh my god, that's that's absolutely beautiful. Dang! And then at the very top of the engine, you just see this little. And you're like, oh, that was weird. What was that? And then you see the bottom bell kind of wobble a little bit, kind of wah, wah, wah. <laughs> And you're like, that doesn't seem good. Yeah. And then very slowly, just like, you know, the mock diamonds all kind of came out of the engine. You see the bottom bell kind of shake. And then you just slowly see the mock diamonds slide back into the engine. And then right <laughs> as that last mock diamond hits the engine, you see the engine Eat go itself. sideways <laughs> and just obliterates itself and you're like oh damn it's amazing just 
huge fireballs yeah. get formed out of this engine. That is what they were battling with this engine for years and years and years and years and yeah. years. They were battling this, trying to make this go. Staged combustion is really hard. A reusable yeah. staged and combustion. Yeah, and with hydrolox, too. A hydrolox Ooh. reusable engine. How incredible is this? Thing? So, back to my tweet. Back to my tweet. A little cryogenic. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to nerd out. I mean, oh, I, did, I did mean to nerd out. Cryogenic. over cryogenic. Oh. So, with all of that in mind, arguably it has failed even before it's launched. Where do you think they went wrong, or do you think it hasn't failed and my analysis is wrong? So I'm basically saying in this tweet, hey, I think the space launch system hasn't even gotten off the ground yet, and it's already failed. Do you think I'm right, or am I wrong? Like, what say you, Internet? And, um, oh, oh, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I will say, as Jared, App many people pointed this out, um, I do like to stir the tank from time to time, right? So time to time, from sure. time to time, it's a good. That's a way to put it. It's a good. Okay, all the time, <laughs> yeah. all the time. It's, no, hang on. It's good to do. It's good to do because, like, you get sentiment in the or things settle at the bottom of the tank. So you want to stir the tank. Yeah, you don't want like, striations. Things, you want it all you, uniform. Exactly. So you need to do that. Also, like, it it helps to kind of like you know get ideas out into the world and yeah. see other people's philosophies. And usually, stirring the tank is a really great thing. But but sometimes. Sometimes you stir the tank and you blow the side of your spaceship off and all of a sudden this really cool trip to the moon is a rescue mission. And that's what that tweet did. <laughs> I was because you're all like, it's stir the pot, not the tank. Well, I was making it a space pun. So uh, yeah, yeah. Like I expected some pushback. I, I worded that very strongly on purpose. Oh yeah, yeah. It was as as I mentioned, it was extremely well crafted to come off poorly. <laughs> You put in a big effort to make sure that that was an absolute poop of a question. Uh, so there is a reason. There's, I chose my words very that's carefully. You, that's what you do. I know. I chose my words very carefully, and I crafted it in such a way that I wanted to see certain responses because I was really curious. Because it was something I was thinking about, and I actually went back and forth on this tweet like four or five times rewording it, trying to figure out how, like, how do I get the response I need? Now, I how will do say, I make the most amount of people <laughs> angry as mad as possible in the least amount of words? I will say. Um, it's funny how upset you can make people in less than 140 characters. Uh, yeah. I, I will say, I think... I should have added a third option, and it would not have altered what I was trying to get at. And that third option should have said something along uh, the lines of, neither it's more nuanced. And yeah. you'll understand yeah. why I didn't think of that up front. I think you'll understand why I didn't think of that up front when oh, I yeah. explain my, my mentality. But I, Bi Bias. You child. Uh, bi I know everyone calling me like bias. <laughs> and like, do you not listen to what? Okay, whatever. Bias you, you and child. ratio. And, and ratio. Yeah, I know, ratio. That's <laughs> and my you're done for. Your that's, career's over. That's my favorite. They're like, oh, you're ratio. And I'm like, how does that relevant to anything in life ever? <laughs> oh, who cares? Boom. I replied. <laughs> <laughs> Owned. <laughs> Owned. <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. Didn't see okay, that okay. coming. Okay, so there are okay. a lot of really interesting comments. Now, before we get into like what I was trying to get at, what is your so the tweet again? So, did has in your opinion has SLS failed, or uh, it hasn't failed? And my analysis is wrong. And I'm going to allow you like because I screwed up the tweet. I'm going to allow you the option of it's more nuanced as well. It is more nuanced than this binary <laughs> it either has or has not failed. So <laughs> it is significantly more nuanced. To me, the space launch system is a relic from a time before private space flight was even a viable idea. Mm. I'm not talking like a viable option, like, okay, now we can go fly on a private rocket. I'm talking before even the idea of a successful private company well, hang was on. even a thing. No, no, no. Because no. I'm not, not... That's not true, though. Okay, so you're thinking Pri that... Private. What's up? Private. Yeah. Private. Yes. Yeah, but hang on. Are you going... You, we're only counting space launch system. You, you can't go back to Constellation era. I'm talking about going back even before the Constellation era. Because there have been multiple rockets in the same configuration as the Space Launch System proposed since the National Launch System, which originally began in 1991. So that was a part of George W. or George Herbert w Walker w Bush's oh. um, vision for space exploration, whatever you want to call it. That I mean, that was the one for his son. Um, 
whatever it was called. Um, this was the one that basically like we're going to the moon and then we're going to Mars in the early nineties. So um, this. By the is... way, I don't remember. Did we do that? No. Oh, okay. No, we didn't. Um, tur- turns out, even now. Not yet, um, but they they literally have uh, the National Launch System One, which is literally a a eight meter tank with four space shuttle main engines and two shuttle derived solid rocket boosters from it. Thank there you, you go, bam, right there, thank you, right thank there, you, right in the middle. He, he doesn't say much, but he puts images in our Discord for us. Yep, <laughs> yep. So there you go, boom. Oh. Boom. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, and, you know, this... Hang on, hang on. The, the heavy lift, the second for like, hang on. <laughs> yeah, Am I the only one work? that noticed that? The the one with the giant, like, you know, it's kind of Atlas reminiscent with the one, like, <laughs> right? Like, ah! Talk about power slide. Yeah, a little bit. I would have never expected an asymmetrical heavy lift, but... <laughs> Hey, it was the 90s. Anything was possible. <laughs> uh, right? Asymmetrical so. was in. It's true. So. Asymmetrical so hot right now. Yeah, it's so hot right now. And we've got it on display at Epcot this year for everyone to see. Look at um, me. My CG's not in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It, it, to me, that is where it comes from. It is still a product of the 90s, of that era. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to have responded to private space flight because it is just so straight and narrow. The evolution of it has come through this era. I mean, you can go from National Launch System to um, a rocket called Magnum, which was basically proposed to do the exact same thing, but for a lunar mission in the late 90s. And then finally, that transfers over to Ares 5 as a part of Constellation. And then we see Ares 5 continue in design, but not name, because they were like, let's just call it a new name and no one will notice. So that's where we get the space <laughs> launch system from. And it's basically just been three decades of pinballing new names back and forth for the same dang vehicle. You just made a bunch so. of SLS stands very angry. Oh, yeah, I know. And it's great. <laughs> so <laughs> New requirements for uh, you know where it's supposed to be built and stuff. Yeah. As well. Exactly. So, 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 and you, I know that you're, what you're, what? That? what? That hurts my this brain. Is, no. This is the, that is the this no. Is, this is the H2A212, which uh, Loopy just reminded me of, uh, which is from JAXA and uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, which uh, looks quite similar. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I don't know how to feel other than scared. Hey, Bob, you, we you, want, you want industrial espionage? Because this is how you get industrial <laughs> espionage. <laughs> Hey, Bob, we've designed a rocket, but we can't quite figure out where the CG is. <laughs> would, you mind, would you mind running a few calculations on... Uh, <laughs> because it, it won't shift. Now, our CG won't shift when the fuel goes out of the vehicle now, will it? I'm glad this I, is... I, a, I don't, what that, accent a, is this? I was about to say, are you that's designing this at Marshall? Like, is that what's going on here? Or? <laughs> is that a bug or a feature? <laughs> All right. Uh, so. So, so it hasn't... But okay, so it's more nuanced. But is yeah. the space launch system, even before it gets off the pad, a failure or a success? Because that's ultimately the question. I think we have to have the program run its course. So, so, so I feel like with space shuttle, you really probably couldn't have said whether it was a, a true success or failure in what it did during its lifetime until maybe about the late '90s. You could start to say, okay, mm. things really aren't starting. To, things are really not working out like they are. Yep. Like we expect them to be. Things aren't working out like they are. Hold up. So is that is that really it? I don't is know that, if that's correct. That, grammar. Is that, is that the shirt for the show? <laughs> things aren't working out like they are. <laughs> <laughs> Things are not going as they should. Okay. Um, so th- that's the more grammatically correct way to say it. it I'm American. I could say it okay, ha- so, works however uh, so, I want. But, so. but hang on, Jared. So was the space w- the space shuttle, when we go back and look at the program, was it a success or was it a failure? It was more nuanced than that <laughs> so because it did a lot of things right uh-huh. but it also did a lot of things wrong mm-hmm. and in the things that it did wrong there are groups and companies that have taken those lessons and had great success okay with them so is, we'll get- is is uh, apollo 13 a success or a failure mm. That's a great question, too. Was mm-hmm. Apollo 13 a success or a failure? Uh, to land on the moon, it was an absolute failure, but to get the crew back alive, it was a success. So I guess the whole joke of calling it a successful failure is kind of like the true way to describe it. Uh, Ryan, so, what's your that's opinion? That's like the United States Space Agency. Looking at, uh, looking at Space Launch System before it's even got off the ground, do you view that the program is 
Has it already failed or? Yeah. Has the program failed already? I Because we, we can't say if it's been a success yet because it hasn't launched, right? So you really... No, you can't say it's been a success, but I definitely don't think it's been a failure already. Um, SLS was, is a rocket that was designed for an era which no longer exists. Hmm. I'm The way I personally look at SLS now, it's going to be like the last hurrah for like proper governmental rockets from the US at least. And that's just... That's my opinion on it, to be honest. SLS is a very expensive vehicle. It's not economical. I personally don't think it should be flown a lot, but we've got to this point. It's got a job to do, and I think it needs to do its job. So That's my rounded take on SLS. Why should it do its job if it's very expensive? Because it ha it, it, it needs to do its job. It's already cost <laughs> a lot of money. It's, Isn't that sunk cost sunk fallacy? Sunk cost fallacy, yes. <laughs> I just want to see it fly. Okay, so. you want to see it fly. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, mean, we I just want to see it fly. fly. It's going to be amazing. I want to see it fly. I was going to say the USS sunk cost fallacy is one of my favorite <laughs> Star Trek ships. <laughs> <laughs> so to you, it has not failed yet, right? I don't know. It's da not failed yet. Dadek, same question to you. Has the space launch system failed before it's even taken off? Um, ignorant engineer here, here. Yes. How so? It was supposed to be cheaper. It was supposed to be faster. Oh, wait, we need more money. Oh, wait, we need more time. You failed. Okay. So this is what struck me as I was driving into work, <clears throat> just kind of thinking about stuff, trying to think about, like, um, what to tweet out. And, you know, I, I was thinking about what defines success in the space launch system. And it's a really difficult answer. Like, what will... What will make space launch systems successful? If it flies once, was that a success? What is it? He what is it here for? Now, when when I sent out the tweet, I got a whole lot of answers with regards to. Ultimately, the tweet was designed in a way, <laughs> without giving it without giving it away, to be like, why do you think we have the space launch system? Because in order for you to answer if it's a failure or a success, you have to answer why we have it in the first place, what its mission actually is. Now, one could argue, hey, Artemis 1, its mission is to go to the moon. Except, is it? Like, that came later, didn't it? Yeah. It's <clears throat> To your point, mm -hmm. it's, it was supposed to be cheaper and faster. It was a replacement to space shuttle, right? Well, is is it? What is it? What is the mission of Space Launch System? It's different for everyone. And so how you define and how you look at it is absolutely different. And that will dictate whether you view Space Launch System as a success or a failure. So when they, when they first uh, put forth the requirements of it, you know, it's going to use shuttle hardware, so it'll be cheaper and faster. Except we've got to re-engineer everything to work with the new rocket. Well, so we've got RS-25s. Those worked. <clears throat> but not for at a time and the software blah 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 and we're not going to reuse them so we can redesign them so that they're cheaper to make like why are you doing all this redesign for something that should have just worked the way it was the the solid rocket boosters okay we're going to add a fifth segment i don't think that required any re-engineering like why 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 did we have to re-test them I, that doesn't make any sense to me sure so, so the <laughs> argument that they made to to go that route is failed because all of their arguments that they used to go that route are not things that they did or could do based on their assessments. But the people making those arguments maybe had a different metric for success of the space launch system. It is successful because there's a lot of people that still have jobs. Exactly. Their metric for success is different. And that's the interesting mm -hmm. thing about the space launch system as compared to other rockets. This metric for success for space launch system isn't a single thing. It's a floating nebulous thing that means different things to different people. And I was really, really curious to see what it meant to different people and if there were any themes. By the way, there were not. <laughs> there, I not that I could find. I mean, there were overtones. If you had asked this question on Twitter in 2015, do you think that the results would have been different? You know, I don't know. And what was really interesting is I actually thought it was going to be about... I, I did not think that everyone was going to be like, oh, yeah, Starship. I actually thought we were going to see about 60% of people saying it has failed and 40% of people saying it was a success. And I, interestingly enough, I got exactly the inverse from that. 60% of people said it's, it has not failed. And 40% of people say it did fail. And if anything, maybe that's a slightly higher number. It's a little bit surprising that 40% of people take a stance of 
of how of wh- how what they view space launch systems mission to be in such a way that it comes up as a failure which would be uh, kind of the engineering standpoint of like it was supposed to be cheaper it was supposed to be faster it was supposed to you know all of those things and it, and it wasn't um well wasn't it though it was supposed to be cheaper but we don't know that it wasn't cheaper than a clean sheet design we have no idea they didn't do it no what if we took this it pole? was it wasn't cheaper than shuttle either uh, that's mm. not a true statement. Shut the development cost of shuttle. If you include inflation, over if you want to amortize the development cost of shuttle over 135 pl- flights, no. I don't think that that's going to make a difference on your per flight number. <clears throat> well, no, the but four it, billion dollar number. And Ryan, you did a thing. You did a news thing on this, right? The four billion dollar number does not include the development cost of space launches. No, right? four point one billion dollars per flight. Per flight, one and flight. That, that is what it costs to build one rocket. And fly one it. rocket, one rocket, one Orion capsule, one Orion service module from ESA, and to run the all the ground service equipment for one flight. But four point one billion dollars. I, I also feel like that number is not fair either because yeah, it's a really big number, but it's not for the space launch system. The space launch system does not need to include Orion. No, correct. Right. Take so, that out. So it's like three point five billion dollars. Still more expensive than Orion. Sh- still more expensive than shuttle. I don't, yeah, you're right. Shuttle was like $1.2 billion to fly, wasn't it? Vax yep. in our chat room, I think, has an extremely good point mm. about this, which is kind of something I was trying to hint uh-huh. at with the idea of go back in time and ask these questions. Sure. but Which Vax says that the huge requirements change was to make it human rated. It was a fundamental shift from the original design and drove an enormous cost and schedule overrun. As Vax correctly points out, when it was Ares 5, it was supposed to be a heavy lift cargo rocket, cargo, cargo. only. Right, right, right. Ares 1 was going to shake everybody, uh, launch everybody <laughs> to orbit. <laughs> yeah, hang on. They proved that that shaking thing was in computers only and didn't actually. Like, they they, they didn't have the vibe expert. Like, it came in. It had a good vibe check it when it, it finally <laughs> flew as Ares 1X. Yeah, like, so, they were able to test the vibe, and they're yeah. like, okay, this isn't too bad. Ares 1X on not the rocket and not the capsule that they wanted? Yeah, I mean, it didn't shake too badly. Uh, it was was on, it was on a four-stick stack, wasn't it? Or a four-segment stack. Stick. <laughs> easy, <laughs> it's easy for it's you to one say. Of them. <laughs> okay, but, uh, but the SLS stands will tell you that Ari- uh, SLS is not Ares 5. It is a totally different vehicle, and they share no heritage between but each other other than maybe the engines. It yes. is a totally different vehicle. They re-engineered f***ing everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, so how can you put not- SLS into the uh, Constellation program camp of like, hey, you know, SLS wasn't designed, you know, Vax is right. Ares 5 was a cargo vehicle. Ares 1 mm-hmm. was the the crew variant, right? Mm-hmm. But SLS is not Ares 5. No, it's not. And so they took the, the idea that the idea that uh, the idea that it wasn't designed with human rating up front, I'm not sure is entirely accurate. It, mm. only, it, it only is in a world in which you consider Ares 5 to be the space launch system and certainly they share inspiration from each other. Mm. I, and I, I'm not sure that it that I would buy that the entirety of the RS25 redevelopment cost is because it was human to make it human rated because they were human rated beforehand. Yeah, why would we we wouldn't have to do any rehuman rating on the RS25 other than the or, there's a pressure difference or there's the, a pressure differential with the fuels, right? Or the SRBs. Well, the SRBs had to be recalled because, because they we went from fifth, four to five. Four, yeah. four well, to five, but the, the, my understanding of the big problem with the RS-25 requalification was that they had to do that because the thermal environment was entirely different from what it was on shuttle. Because now you had four of them in an extremely low pressure area, and you had tr- a lar- significantly larger amount of thermal issue in that area compared to how it was with shuttle. Base track. That was my that was my understanding. Wait, wait, wait. So. What what is a low pressure area that was different than where? Shuttle? shuttle went didn't shuttle go to space with the rs20 yes the, the, uh, correct me if i'm blunt, wrong but i'm the, pretty sure shuttle brought the engines with them the blunt body base drag caused yes. by the big tank and Mm-mm. it being four instead yeah, of yeah. the three stack yeah, yeah. and okay. it's now right next to the srbs as well not offset from the srbs sure. in, be- so. in between sure but i mean that's okay we're, we're getting stuck in the weeds of, of things that i'm not sure 
are getting a little too technical. Get too, I can't do technical, yeah. Jared. You know yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so let's go over some of the. Uh, so th this created a absolute storm on Twitter. To be fair, slightly designed. Although, also, I knew I was stirring the tank or the pot, so to speak. I didn't realize how much I was stirring it with the way I worded this. So, uh, yeah, it got uh, it got aggressive. Got a lot of bangs and shimmies up here. Yeah. What was what? It wasn't instrumentation. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you that. Uh, it was really interesting. I was surprised and a little bit disappointed at, like, how attacky everyone in space Twitter was. And I get it. Like, I sent out an aggressive tweet, tweet and I got aggressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Like, um uh, you know, what you put out into the universe is exactly what you're going to get back. That's what I put out. That's what I got back. Mm -hmm. Had it coming. But at the same time, like, there was no restraint. So uh, let's go over some of these. It, uh, some yeah. of these were really interesting. And da -da, just, you know, you can pick one. Um, so talking about the Space Launch System, this is from Andrew. It was designed to keep shuttle jobs and provide a moon rocket. It did both and have engines, boosters contracted uh, out to Artemis. Mass. It's not going anywhere and will fly plenty. So basically... It was, it's successful. See, this goes back to how, how do you view uh, the mission? Like, what's the mission of Space Launch System? Why is it here? And so yeah. you can get an insight into what all of that is based on all of these answers. It's going to be interesting if you take a look at it through that lens. So, you know, that was the lens of Space Launch System is here for jobs. It did exactly yeah. as it was supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. Right? And I mean, wasn't Shuttle there to do that as well? Um, so a shuttle's original plan, originally, originally, was so that um, it was part of the Von Braun um, space station shuttle system to get to Mars, right? Because he was like, we can't do direct to Mars. We shouldn't do that. We, you build the shuttle to the station, and then you shuttle from station to station, and then you shuttle back down to Mars, because that's what it's going to take. I think that's a little more Von Braun's own personal idea, as opposed to what the space shuttle hist historically when that presentation was given to Nixon, when it was basically, do we want to continue Apollo applications or do we want to go with shuttle? Right. Which a lot of people look at that decision as basically Nixon having to make a decision as to whether does he want NASA to continue with shuttle or does he want to continue uh, someone else's legacy? And well, but it was my understanding yeah. that he was presented with shuttle and station. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to build. We want to build shuttle and station. And he said, you can't have the station. You can have the shuttle. I, I don't think it was Nixon that necessarily said that, but he was like, no, this is too expensive. You can have the little bit. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we got there, which is yes. the original vision of a shuttling system to get us to Mars. Yes. And the idea of shuttle was low cost accessibility and build a space station sure essentially right, right. And, and, and routine flight to so space. then was shuttle a success one third <laughs> one out of three ain't that huh <laughs> so <laughs> by the way what do, you, what do you think ryan was was shuttle a success the uh, initial concept for shuttle of a shuttling system that would take people to places beyond low earth orbit that never happened so that aspect of shuttle was a failure but what we got out of shuttle i wouldn't call that a failure i call that we we got the international we got a lot of the international space station out of shuttle we got hubble out of shuttle like we had we got so many good things and so much good science out of shuttle it wasn't a failure the initial concept though was because that never happened let me present you with a different option then what if we didn't have shuttle and instead we had the saturn 5 so now you've got um Oh, God, I'm like, Mir, not Mir. The first space station was... Skylab. 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 Oh, my God. So now you've got I Skylab. Mean, first American space they, station. They right. did a whole movie about it, man. I know. So. <laughs> so now you've got Skylab-type stuff instead, and you can loft, like, really huge things into space. So you don't get shuttle anymore. Instead, you get Saturn V. Is shuttle a success or a failure if you get sh if your options are you can keep Saturn V and build those same things there, or you can have shuttle. How, like, how did we end up? Something to think about. I'm, I mean, obviously, well, I mean, we had with the Saturn V. You could basically launch half of the total weight of sh of a shuttle itself to orbit in a single shot. Right. Well, the, I mean, the usable so. volume of Skylab was for a long time like as big or bigger than station. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like was a, was on big. one launch. Yeah. Imagine what they could have done with four. Yeah. You can get stuck in the middle. You, you can. can get stuck. There's some great <laughs> footage of them like running through the perimeter. Okay, um, next one. Da -da. 
how hard we. Uh, so Aravale, hopefully I'm saying that right. I would argue it hasn't failed at all, and in fact, it will likely be very successful if, based on the project goals, keeping the shuttle engineers and contractors going and returning to cislunar space. We just got lucky to have a competing program with a grander goals. What's interesting in that is like, okay, I got it with the. Um, you know, keeping people employed. But the cislunar space thing is a fairly new addition to the space launch system, is it not? Uh, to a degree, I guess it would depend on whether we're talking space launch system and space launch system itself, or if we're going to run as far back as I propose running it back to. <laughs> I just don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair to space launch system. I think just because you retool the destination and you have to change things about it, it doesn't just because you, sh you shave your dog because it gets hotter during the year doesn't mean that I want to know where this analogy is going. <laughs> I'm trying to figure you out where this is going. You don't. Too, you don't so. get to call your dog a different breed because you shaved its hair. Yeah, I guess is how I would say it. So okay, I, I, I saw where you were going, and I'm yeah, trying to thank you, trying Jada. To save hey, it thank for you. you. Hang on, can someone get me there? What so. was the core diameter of the Aries Five? Anyone know off the top of their just, head? Why don't I just look? Yeah, and then tell me what the core diameter of the space launch system is. And oh boy. Let's keep in mind that the core diameter of these things is a big deal. Yes. Right? It's kind of what a lot of things are based off of. And if those numbers don't match, one would argue they're not the same rocket. I'm going to mm -hmm. say Delta T would be wrong. How so? Because the core diameter is different from the payload fairing diameter. No, but I'm saying between the rocket. No, I'm not saying between the fairing and the, the rocket. I'm saying that um, the rocket itself, the diameter was always the same. So is, Everything was based okay. off of so that it, diameter. You got it so right here. So is the first Falcon 9 different different from the, the current generation of Falcon 9s? Yeah. Yeah, it's a retooled are, rocket. Are they they're different rockets? Yeah. They they maintain the same name, but like <laughs> I don't think anyone would argue that a Falcon 9 Block 1 is the same as a Falcon 9 Block 5. No. They Although got, they're they the, same, the same they are the same diameter. They're not the same length. <laughs> Dunno, what are you? I heard you laughing over there. I'm trying to figure out what you're laughing about. So, oh, I, Jamie's arguing an opposite point to something she argued earlier. Uh, what? What? Which is what? Days ago, weeks ago. Not, 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 the S the uh, SLS Starship debate that you that I noped out on. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Join our Discord and you could see us do stuff like this all as, the time. As a reminder, I like to steer the pot. Yeah. Yep, that's right. <laughs> yes, okay. I know. So, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I will use whatever data is advantageous to me in the moment. Uh, okay, so Aries 5, uh -huh. diameter mm -hmm. 10 meters. And? Space launch system mm -hmm. diameter 8.4 meters. Hmm, interesting. So. so, would you say that 10 meters and 8.4 meters are the same? They're both meters. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They're not in freedom units. Well, my, my, but... <laughs> my point is that's a retooled, re-engineered rocket. It's not the same. Okay. Oh, God. But okay. I think you're wrong. <laughs> We're moving. Oh, my God. Hang on. So this is oh. a really long comment. I don't think it'll work. Okay. No, that's going to break it's it. It's so long oh. that it just broke the whole thing. That's all right. I'm oh, that's also on the, on the Ares 5 Wikipedia. On the Ares 5 Wikipedia... It does say that there's two options, which is, I'm, I'm quoting Wikipedia here, uh, the liquid fueled core stage was to be derived from the space shuttle external tank and was to use either five or six RS-68B engines attached to the bottom of a new 10 meter diameter tank or five SSMEs attached to the bottom of a stretched version of the space shuttle's 8.4 meter external huh. tank. So I read huh. that as they could have done a new 10 meter tank or huh. an 8.4 meter tank instead huh. and it looks like an sls has the 8.4 meter huh. tank oh, let me look up uh what the diameter for the magnum rocket from marshall space flight so <laughs> oh look at that 8.4 meters because it was basically going to use a space shuttle external tank well this is not going huh. to my advantage anymore so huh. we're going to change the topic oh snap <laughs> oh snap uh oh huh. uh oh huh, huh. I don't like this new data, so I'm going to ignore it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not Welcome helping my point. You're oh, not helping would my you point. look at that? Oh, dang it. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, what do you huh. got? What do you got? Oh, yeah. The National Launch System Corps proposed in 1989 was going to be using the same tooling <laughs> as the external tanks for 8.4 meters. Oh my God, oh, really? It's almost like really? I looked this stuff up and figured out that they <laughs> might be the same rocket. Just in a different time and a different name. 
in a different destination and a different guy rubber stamping it at a different time and a different political party with different budgets. Maybe it's a different <laughs> rocket then. <laughs> Everything else is different. Why is it not a different rocket? <laughs> All right, all right. Wait, wait, say that again? <clears throat> he basically said it's all different. I'm like, well, that is a different rocket. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> no calling me out of my tricks. Don't let the world If you're going to use shenanigans, you own shenanigans. <laughs> I do. <laughs> People are realizing that I use shenanigans, and that's not fair. I feel like I should I have use like shenanigans a... to my advantage, and now I'm not going to be able to I do should that have like anymore. a cork board with photos of all these rockets <laughs> and like string just going back and forth between amazing. them all. All right, all right. So, artificial pay no gra- attention to the man behind the curtain. Uh, artificial Gravity Space Station <clears> says, and, and one of the things that got me on this one was, the, and this is done on their own Twitter avatar. It's not centered. <laughs> this is not me screwing up the logo. If you go look at space underscore stations right now on Twitter, you will note that station is not centered. And I wa- I almost centered it in the graphic, but then I was like, no, no, they didn't do it. I neither will. Center, my- center of gravity is off because I got that tank on the top left. Oh, you know what? That's right. That's right. <laughs> We're learning a lot about CG today, kids. As much as I detest the waste of money on this, I think it hasn't failed yet and that I can still achieve its objectives over budget and behind schedule. But it doesn't need to ex- It doesn't need to exist and we would have done better without it. We just didn't know that when we started it. And that was another interesting trend. <laughs> Excellent. Did you really... Teapot Dolphin, yep. did you just... Take the yep. amount of time. Oh my yep. God, Ryan! Yep. To to yep. write air. He doesn't he doesn't talk a lot, but he like he makes graphics on the fly for us. That's great. Um, yeah. So that was another theme that I kind of saw. There weren't a lot of themes, but one one of the themes was if we knew then what we what are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> and can I have some if straight, I knew, straight whiskey? If I <laughs> you and me both. Um, if I knew then what I knew now. Right. Like, that's isn't that everybody's goal? Like, what straight whiskey? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, but actually, to, to know what you know now, know then what you know now. Also, I just want to say Colton says that was quick with regards to um, <laughs> Ryan coming up with that graphic, and I'm, I must concur. That was yeah. That was impressively fast, yikes, Ryan. Like, I mean, it's, it's not that hard. Well done. <laughs> yes, but you still had to like find it, screenshot it, draw the arrows, and then post it onto Discord. Not that, that was hard. not that uh, hard. Yeah. Anyhow, just take the kudos, man. Take the kudos. So the the last thank comment... you. That was so incredibly difficult. I had to go through so much effort to get that one screenshot. I'm thank you so much. Well done, you. <laughs> um, so that last comment. I'm trying to get us back on track. I, we're, we're so far off track. That last comment is basically... We left the main track a long time ago. <laughs> we never got on the track to begin with. There was, there was no track. We, Much we, like SLS. <laughs> oh, ouch. ouch. Keeping it on topic. Uh, ouch. Um, so I, you know, the, with the last comment, that was another theme that I kind of saw, which is, and it, you, you alluded to this earlier, Jared, which is if we knew then what we know now, we may not have built the space launch system. Yeah. And th- that was actually... I think might be a future tweet that will upset the entire community. <laughs> I mean, I got I got to get Space Twitter angry again. The next one yeah. might be: Is Space Launch System the last rocket that NASA themselves ever built? Not that they're building it themselves, but you know what I mean. Yeah, basically NASA puts Designs. out the, puts out the RFP and does the specifications and says, "Hey, everybody, mm-hmm. this is what we're looking for. Come bid." Or do you think? Wait, that wait. NASA puts out the the RFP and puts out Congre- Congress's specifications. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Congress tells NASA what to put out, and then NASA does it. So, um, you know, I was going to say that comment kind of reminds me of the James Webb Space Telescope, right? How so? Because so, it was it was. Long, I mean, can we bring can we bring it back up? That comment back up because I thought that was a really just a really good one. Oh, hang on, um, yeah, I got it, I got it. Has the show ever been? No, that's in that's 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 not right. Oh, not that one. I'm talking there about that go. one. There yeah. we go. There there we so, go. The off, so uh, look look for the off center icon. There's, so, there's a lot of buttons. <laughs> um, <laughs> just how it says there, I think it hasn't failed yet in that it can still achieve its objectives over budget and behind schedule. That's kind of what the James Webb Space Telescope was, right? Way over budget, way behind schedule. But it does have that achievement of its no, goals. I think, of I hang on, is hang that on. achieving so, its objectives, though, if it's over budget and behind schedule? I'm not no. saying that that's a part of its objectives. I'm saying that the objectives it needs to accomplish 
can still occur even if it's over budget. But here, here's the weird thing with space launch system. So, so to, to Dutta's point, you're supposed to be on budget and on time. But I don't think that means that you're necessarily meeting, yeah. not meeting your objectives. On, it just but means on that, budget, on time, on orbit, pick two. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. the shirt for the show. <laughs> so... Okay, I get that point, but like, well, let's just say that that's not necessarily like James Webb has an objective of going up there and explore, mm -hmm. in viewing and um, analyzing the cosmos, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's specifically designed to look be further than Hubble could yes. into the ether. And a multitude of other things sure. along with it, too. But it's got very specific goals yes. that it's going to accomplish. Yes. Name for me the specific goals of the space launch system employ people. Um, put money in the right places. But uh, but uh, the, the, hang on, you can point launch. Uh, obviously, be a part of the Artemis program. But you can with that. It is now. You can point to things. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Which what, program hasn't it been a part of? I guess in yeah. terms of crew over the past. Can you do it, long, Ryan? So. Can you, Ryan? Can you name for me the specific goals of Space Launch System? They look pretty. <laughs> No, that's they his, got rid that's of the his moon, number one purpose. They got rid of it's the number one purpose vibes. is to look pretty. Yeah, the, yeah, the old, the old, uh, yeah, the got, old paint job. It still looks really. pretty. Yeah. It still looks pretty. Why? Why does it look? Do you have a picture of it? Uh, what's your uh, name, Dada? Yeah. Look, what's your that. name, Dada? <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's typing away. Uh, I was gonna have him bring up another question. Hey, bring, yeah. So I, I guess that's the interesting thing to me about space launch system is we have this. We have this thing, and it, I don't feel like it has a clear, definitive, like, this is what we're doing. It, it does now. M m <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, Internet, allow me to show you all four pixels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Great potato can. Thanks. Thanks, Dada. I think you were, you didn't have to like. That this is actually a simulation of NASA's TV's coverage of the launch. <laughs> oh. 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 This, that co that, that oh. covered all blocks, is what, mm. is, that's what that was. You couldn't, Ouch. You couldn't tell. So, this, why does it, uh, so out of curiosity, for anyone who thinks this looks cool, I'm not saying it doesn't, but if you do, and this goes for the ch chat room as well, why does this look cool? Why is this a cool looking rocket? It's big and orange, and then it has the Why little pointy side boosters, and then it and then it goes thinner, and then it goes thinner again, and then it has a little pointy bit at the top, and it's got like a Saturn V launch tower, but it's not red, it's grey, so it's kind of like Saturn V, and Saturn V is cool, and it still looks cool. So really, it's, and it's, it's like an, it's it's, an, it's like it's like Saturn V and space shuttle, and then they had a kid, and it's really pretty. It's an orange orange Saturn shuttle. So what we do yeah. is we take the Saturn V, but we and make it like do is, Saturn, but we make it like shuttle colors. And then we do it in the 2020s. In the twenty. Actually, I'm curious. Leave your comment below. Leave your. Com I actually do not like the look of the space launch system. I think the older You're looks. No, I think. I think Saturn V look cooler than space launch system does. I think I Saturn think, V. I think, Starship, I think they're on the same level. I think Starship looks way cooler it's just than that. Black and white. I like, also think you're wrong. It's lame. You it's like, so you like the space launch system more than you like the look of... If I had to do a tier list, they'd be close, but it would be, it would be like, no. it would be like Saturn V, SLS shuttle, Starship. Third. I Wow. Okay. So first of all, I love all rockets. Yeah, I mean, so, to be fair, big rocket cool. I mean, they're right. all great. They're all cool. They're, I mean, none of them are quite Delta II cool, but I mean, they're all great. So... They're not blue. Yeah, they're not blue. And they don't have a shark mouth on them either. That is kind of awesome. So, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty sick. So, <gasps> look at that. That's pretty yeah, that is pretty cool. Oh, that's Those poor, poor, of them poor, poor engines. Poor poor engines if only they knew their fate. Yeah. Womp womp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, uh, next one. <sighs> now we have to wait. At least they get to at least they get to have a cool ride on the um on the crawler because I get to go to the pad twice. This is an interesting comment because this goes <laughs> towards like the shifting expectations mm -hmm. of the space launch system, which is space launch system never prom promised to be anything more than America's premier method of getting humans to the moon. But <laughs> was it like when we first designed the space launch system, is that what it was there for? It was a, it was to be a part of that. So Okay. I mean, there were there were actual architectures floated that would have had a space launch system launching cargo or components for eventual crewed Mars spacecraft for NASA. 
So, that, I mean, these were the ideas early on in 2011, 2012, when they were trying to figure out what to do with it. When the, they were I, scribbling off Ares 5 and putting SLS, <laughs> blow it on the letterhead. I, dis I disagree with you on that one. <laughs> you know what's really funny, though, is I will argue with people on Twitter both sides of that particular point. <laughs> so I, I'll be like, oh, no, it's totally Ares 5. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then here I am, I'm like, oh, no, it's totally not Ares 5. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I just like to be difficult. What do you want? Uh, the, the really interesting bit of that comment is the last sentence, which is, with it being the cheapest rocket development of NASA's history, I don't see the failure. I <laughs> I'm not sure that's a true statement, even if you account for inflation. It, it is not. Yeah. There, there's no. no way. Yeah, but I can't, no. like, I don't have that date in front of me. No, Ryan. It's not. Ryan, is it the cheapest mm -hmm. rocket in <laughs> NASA's history? Well, I said yes. Yes. I figured you would Google it. Oh, is it because there's no picture with arrows that it takes longer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get, we can just jump to the next one. Uh, number the first thing on Google is twenty billion dollars. Don't know how correct that is, but that's the first number of Google, so we're going to trust that, and that's the official figure. Uh, this I, I enjoy. The, this is kind of again the kind of the theme of like it's to go to the moon. You're one hundred percent wrong. It's a, all about means to the end. The goal is the moon, and the objective of that goal is to the moon at all costs. There is no do it cheaply in space. Stop this nonsense. Uh, thoughts. There's no do it cheaply yet. It's going to get cheaper, not necessarily with SLS. That is not what I'm saying. SLS mm, is going okay. to cost lots of money all the time. How's but it gonna... space travel as a whole is going to get cheaper because we have so many different organizations starting to come online, uh, going through development, developing big vehicles that can do these sorts of things. That's how it will get cheaper. This sort of Competition hits... will drive down the cost. Oh, uh, this... <clears throat> I do love... Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Got to bring it up. Yep. <laughs> Boom. Sea dragon. Everyone else, quiet. Vax is speaking. <laughs> he's like, he's like, mic drop. <laughs> I do want to say that kind of does like slide into this pet peeve I've been having mm. of late where I've, I've kind of thought about it and came and kind of like realized how dumb it is and how annoyed I am now that I like was bought into it, which is that we really need to stop talking about launch ca launch costs in a total amount per kilogram, right? Because you're not buying 500 kilograms of space mm. if I'm launching on a Falcon 9. Right. I'm buying a Falcon 9 and the launch services to go with it. That's correct. So it doesn't matter if I'm using 500 kilograms oh, for yes, it. You're doing it's a that I'm doing the whole dang thing if I'm flying solo by myself. So I feel like we need to start talking, if we're going to measure metrics in terms of, of amounts for launches, we should probably start doing it with total launch costs for the launch services. Hmm. And that does end up kind of making it have to fit in its own categories. So like obviously you can't compare a Falcon 9 to a space launch system in those kinds of, of comparisons. Mean? Of it. course you can. Because <laughs> you can't, cause Falcon 9 can't carry as much as the space launch system can, as much as we'd like to. But hold but, on, but like, okay, let's, but you can do that comparison because that goes to a cost benefit for a space launch system, does it not? Because if I can loft one unit of things. Now, if I can loft 10 units of things on Space Launch System, but I need two Falcon Heavies to loft those same 10 units of things, then I have. Then it costs me two Falcon Heavies worth of stuff. I have discovered... Yeah, your thing is, is 30 units. You can't, if, it, if it's indivisible, it's indivisible. Okay, that's fair. So if it yeah. doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. That's fair, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but assuming so, it fits. Yeah. And it's, will it that's, blend? That's like the engineering... Equ equivalent of trying to have a baby in nine months with nine or in one month with nine women right yeah okay i get i it, it can be that way but it doesn't have to be it all depends on the payload i think there are benefits to cutting up the costs in different ways right so you're not wrong mm -hmm. like if you've if you've got if you're flying something to space and you own the rocket it doesn't matter what the rocket can do. Your cost is the rocket, mm -hmm. right? That's your yes. point. Yes. If, yes. If, and, I'm and, not and in this kind of a thing, I will say that, like, if you fly, like, you with Europa Clipper, obviously, because it's not launching on a space launch system, it's launching on a Falcon Heavy. Mm -hmm. That kind of does reduce a bit of the budget, if you will. 
sure. for that there. We're still going to have to pay... By $3.5 billion. <laughs> Something $3. like that. $3.7 billion. Um, dollars. I, I think Europa Clipper is going to cost a little bit more because... Because that, now they got three point seven billion dollars more they can spend. Well, f- it's going to co- it's going to be a lot more expensive than a regular Falcon Heavy because this mm. is a flagship mission. And you, you, I will just say this: as I'm not, I don't work for NASA or anything like that, but I know that I can confidently look at SpaceX and say you don't mess this one up. That's fair. So, yeah. um, so there will be extra costs associated with that for assurances and things sure. like that. Yeah, so, that's fair. I yeah. think that's fair. Yeah, so yeah. I would imagine Europa Clipper will probably be a half a 500 to $700 million launch on a Falcon Heavy, something right, like so that. Still a so. $3 million savings. Yeah, just a uh, bit, just a bit. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> did you, by the way, did you? No, you, you didn't. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, oh, oh. So with regards to those numbers, though. So, yeah, you're right. If you're the solo one going up and you're 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 right too, Dada, where if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And you can't necessarily you can't just cut things in half and be like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, you know, I cut my satellite in half and we'll, it'll magically work in orbit. <laughs> That's not how that works either. But that is also kind of why you need to have multiple ways of measuring the same thing, mm-hmm. because it all depends on what you're trying to do. So. You look at one of these transporter missions that Falcon 9 brings up that has a gajillion different payloads on it. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they they bought their little slice of the total payload capacity of Falcon. Yeah, but they're paying transporter for that. They're not paying SpaceX for that. How is that relevant? Transporter How is that ends relevant up to the space- rocket, though. Well, I'm talking about total costs of the f- total cost of the flight. Transporter pays for that, and then people pay transporter to put their payloads on there. So they're not really paying spacex for that they're paying transporter and then that movie go that movie the money goes on to spacex <laughs> yeah but their cost is still not the cost of a falcon 9 and they got to space so their cost went they're, down yeah the, co- the cost is the cost the cost is the cost yeah. regardless of how you split it up and who's it doesn't matter who's who d- pooling to to make it work i mean that's true too that's true too but then but then at that point like the amount that you can loft up into space matters then then the, so transporter could if if you could get 10 more units on falcon they would probably put 10 more units on falcon they're they're most likely limited by weight okay no gotcha no i know i don't know i'm not stating this for fact Uh, yeah i'm trying to figure (laughs) like i'm sure you could see the gears turning yeah very i feel like as hard as they can i feel like i've confused you you have so 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 the performance of a rocket is is a is a mass factor so there's a certain amount of mass and you want a, a particular orbit and in order to reach that orbit you need a particular delta v regardless of what size your rocket is to every rocket has a curve of the delta v that they can reach with a certain weight mm-hmm. and that delta v is going to change based on the weight you put a, a cube set on a falcon heavy and you can get it to the sun in in, in a heartbeat <laughs> or but, yeah. but, but if you, you max could out probably a, get it to the sun <laughs> yeah but if, but if you max but if you max out a falcon heavy you know it's not going to be able to get you as high of an orbit so i understand the the want for a common factor to be able to say that this rocket costs this much for this amount of payload, but that's just not a fair metric, and it's and it's it's a it's a curve. Everything is a curve. Would it be more fair if it was launch costs to like essentially like low Earth orbit or translunar injection or trans Mars injection? Would that make it a more fair comparison? You would have that? to have you would have to have a, a standardized orbit that you are defining as this is where our cost threshold is. Mm, okay. But, I see where you're at. But whenever you deviate from that, you're going to deviate from that cost threshold because your mass available to go to that higher orbit is going to go down. Gotcha. So you can say that Falcon Falcon 9 can do 100 kilo. I'm, I'm just pulling numbers out of, of thin air. Falcon 9 can do 100 kilograms to you know, a, a lunar orbit and I something... Have- a- just I know it's I'm not I'm pulling numbers Just out of my ass. Just sit there, relax. Jamie. I'm okay, trying, I'm trying. Okay, yeah. But a Falcon Heavy can do 300 kilograms to the same orbit. That doesn't ma- make the cost of a Falcon Heavy three times more. You know, its its capability is different. Yes. Does that, does that make sense? I think my point is <laughs> we're fighting for One control. One <laughs> I think my well, I took control, so I'm gonna <laughs> give it back. I think my point is like. You're not wrong. Like looking at the total cost of the rocket is a good thing. Like, mm-hmm. but you also do need to look at the uh, dollars per kilogram to a 
orbit. Like both of these numbers matter. Okay. And you can't say one is more important than the other. Mm -hmm. Both of these numbers matter. They're both relevant in their own respective ways. Exactly. Correct. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's making a lot more sense to me when you guys talk, put it that way. So. Right. Is, is that a fair so way to put that? Also, Dada, Dada, that was a yeah. very. Yeah. Also, Dada, that was a very good way to put it. I got it almost right out of the gate with that. So thank you. All right. So continuing to be good and wise. We'll, di always. we'll diverge with a fun one really quick, which is a from Andrew C four thirty seven asks, totally random question: Is the set a fully built built set? Yeah, actually, it is. Uh, you wanna hang on? He's gonna, he'll uh, he can. Don't don't don't, don't break it. Don't, 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 don't dear God. God. Okay. Well, first off, how are you breathing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No spacesuit. Pressure difference. I'm sorry, yeah. Jared. I can't let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, hang on. Well, okay. Get back on this. Get back on camera. If you stay for post show, which means you need to be a member. But if you for well, something something. Yeah, you're gonna shake the camera. You could shake the camera, and that would prove it too. I'm walking. Space station shake. Oh, somebody was somebody saying space, shake the space camera. Space quake. Space quake. Oh, anyway, that was. Okay. All right. What's the next one? What's the next one? Uh, Mr. Slippery, this is a fun one. Ooh. Ready? It's the only rocket currently in existence capable of delivering a crewed vehicle to the moon. Ooh. That's a good I hope point. the VAB has a retractable roof, because uh, otherwise <laughs> it's going to be quite difficult. <laughs> Until it flies, it's just a so, big giant water tower with yeah, fancy drain it's, valves. Yeah, it's not currently. <laughs> 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 oh, that is the best way oh my god I've heard it well, no hang on oh my the god the best part is he's now referenced uh, both starship and the sls in exactly the same way so that's <laughs> fun um vax asks can't yeah so this was kind of uh can't falcon heavy do that too uh yeah right i mean there are multiple vehicles are, you know, arguably, Where, Space Launch System is not ready yet. It hasn't even rolled out yet. Where's Starman? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, good point. Like, some sort of weird elliptical Martian orbit. Not in orbit around Mars. It's like a weird elliptical... Is that a bigger orbit than the moon? Yeah, slightly. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like an actual spacecraft is slightly heavier than a Tesla Roadster. I, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I don't know either. What do you mean? It has two seats. <laughs> That's enough for two people. <laughs> that Tesla, that Tesla Roadster has infinite interior space. So there's that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's got it's got light years of headroom. Uh, so I thought that I thought that I could fit in it. Uh, I thought that comment was interesting simply because. Like the SLS and NASA stands just started making stuff up and then they would dig their heels in and like <laughs> really double down on that. It's like, what, but you're not even factually accurate. <laughs> and so it's interesting to see that, you know, everyone complains about the SpaceX fanboys, right? That's like, that's everyone complains about the SpaceX fanboys. But I don't think the NASA or SLS fanboys are any better than the SpaceX fanboys. They're just rooting for a different team in the exact same way. Yeah, the fanboy mentality is what kills it. Yes. Yeah, apparently. Apparently. Um, I this think it's more just the visibility because you have more SpaceX fanboys than you would SLS fanboys. Maybe. But, fa but fanboyism just sucks, period. It does. Like, yeah, I learned that. Like, one. get a life, get a hobby, expand it out. So the launch know. pad brings up an interesting point, which is Falcon Heavy can get to the moon, or more specifically, can send Dragon to the moon, but it will need an ascent add on. But. What do you oh, mean? Just use parachutes. Well, hang on, hang on. But that's not the requirement. <laughs> 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 what about the super Draco? Hang on, you actually got me for a second. Like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't comprehend what you had said, and then I started going, and then my brain went kink. I'm like, oh, wait a oh minute. boy, that's what NASA wanted. Um, hey, you could use the super Dracos once. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's so, your you ascent stage. Is the super it's a one-way trip. Yeah. Hang on, though. Uh, I'm a but, genius. But Space Launch System can't send Orion to the surface of the moon. No, you well, like, Orion Apollo well, 8's that thing. Orion can't land. Exactly, Vax. Orion can't land. Well, they can send it there. Yeah. So they, they just what, won't get it back. What's the, but what's the <laughs> difference, then? What's the difference? Well, Orion has its own propulsion system that is designed to get itself both 
in orbit around the moon and then also back from the moon as well. That's neat, but that so has nothing I don't, to do with space launch I system. I don't know about Dragon, though. But how is that relevant to space launch system? Because if we're comparing Falcon Heavy and space launch system, then we need to also compare the spacecraft that you will fly Why? on them, right? What? No, Why? Well, what have, we, what have we been talking about for the past five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Any more? Uh, oh, this one was interesting. Rocket Cello says it's the cheapest and shortest development of a super heavy launch vehicle that we know of. Wow. Shortest development would be uh, the Saturn V, wouldn't it? That was designed like in four or five years in the early 60s, wasn't it? Saturn uh, V was rapidly designed. Saturn V was rapidly designed. Iterated. iterative iteratively easy for you to say uh-huh, from all that came before it yeah by basically the same people but okay so how is that different than space launch system then I, like going back to your point and then we got to go back to like the 90s for this thing yeah i don't i don't i don't think it's the same as space launch system i yeah. think it might be similar to what spacex has done with starship We'll see. Wait, well, according wait, space to, launch system according to no, no, no. According the to Google, Saturn V, Saturn v costs more than SLS to develop so far. Is uh, it says fifty three point four billion in twenty twually dollars, and SLS, according to Ars Technica, is twenty billion. Yeah, I think I'm arguing the timeline though, the shortest development, right? Because Saturn V yeah. was it. It sure is. Sure is stuff should have been because they were ba- standing on the shoulders of giants. Well, hang on. With, yeah, yeah. So Zapfans, I'm sorry. I mean, I was going to say I didn't mean to interrupt, but I absolutely did. F1 <laughs> was fired in 1959, first time they worked on it for a while. So let's see here. When's the first time a space shuttle main engine was fired? 70s. Cool. So they've been working on this thing for what, 50 years? Oh, wow. Yeah. The F1 actually started development in 1955. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's actually wow. much earlier than I thought. Yeah. Thought. Great call, Zapfan, Zapfan. And yep, first firing. Uh, Four years. Uh, March 1959. Hey, happy anniversary, F1. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. First. Fu- first I'm sorry, Dad. I did interrupt you. And I, like, that's fine. So what they're saying. I don't, uh, I don't think you're any less rude, any more rude than I did before. <laughs> 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 I meant I meant you could complete your thought if you wanted to. No, I was I was comparing uh, Starship's development time to Saturn to uh, Saturn V's, the, the process by which they got there. Sure, but I think the argument is like both are arguably faster than space launch system. Agreed. So you're telling me that Saturn V did it with a lot of money quickly and, and yeah. quickly. They good. could waste anything but and time. And the space launch system has done it with a lot of money, but not quickly. Good, cheaper, fast. Pick to pick two. No, I. I mean, yeah, it's been expensive, but it's been you know half. Less than half the cost, according to the numbers Ryan came up with. Okay. I, I, I have a hard time. So you're getting it at half the speed. <laughs> I mean, also. I mean, kinda. Also, let's face it: the space launch system is not exactly what we would call a national priority, like Project Apollo was. Yeah, yeah, that's fair too. So, I mean, there was some mm-hmm. serious motivation to do that at that time. It's also we might be approaching having that serious motivation again. Yeah, um, kidding. But hey, brilliant! We'll get faster SLS development. <laughs> no, you know, you know, oh, no, please, not not like this. No, it's no. all it's also not done. Space launch system? Yeah. How is it not done? Has it flown? That doesn't mean it's done. Like it's rolling out. It's rolling out. Like, stop. Well, you're not saying. Hang stop. on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Are you telling me a vehicle isn't done until it flies? Even after the, after you for your first flight, there is more development to correct problems that you found that you didn't know that you that you had. That's fair, but one could say that then a rocket's never done. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, I said one could say it. I'm I'm saying it. And you're one <laughs> of four. I'm not going to argue with your obstinate <laughs> observations. Uh, <laughs> what, right. what, I, what I'm saying is that until it has... Okay, so this, this this requires a little bit of background. I had a philosophy teacher in college, and oh god, and his one of the things that he always said is that the thing isn't the thing until it can thing. The and, thing isn't the, the thing, thing until right. it can thing. Like until it what, can thing. What what, what, is, what is a car? Do you put four wheels together and sit in it and sit on the on on the ground in between them and go vroom? No, it has to move you from one place to another. So until you put a, assemble parts and it moves you from one place to another, it's not a car. So until SLS gets off the ground, it's not a rocket. So until it, until it 
accomplishes the goal of putting something into space, it's not a rocket. It's just a big, giant statue. Now I'm just, like, imagining people standing out in the middle of the swamp <laughs> at Kennedy Space Center, and they're, like, picking up mud and then dropping it down and saying, it has not flown until it has... <laughs> You know, something like that. You know, oh, man. just or there's like people out at out at Vandenberg, you know, grabbing sand and letting it fly. You know, zip through their their fingers and saying it is not seen until you the fo- until the fog is gone. You, you, know, you can't hold the, it that far away because the fog you wouldn't be able to see. Oh it. yeah, <laughs> right, actually, right, right, here, right here. Yeah. So yeah, interesting. So <laughs> didn't didn't realize my philosophy courses were going to come in handy here. They so. always do. You're philosophizing. Yeah, you're philosophicating. Philosophicating on the show. So, all right, I think that's enough on this one. I, I'm sure that <laughs> were, were there any more comments? Did I get to all of them? Yeah, you got okay, to all of them. Cool. Uh, Dada is right. It has to think first. Also, the downside, <laughs> the downside of Dada having all the control is that he can also opt to push anything he wants onto the screen. And yeah, all right. Falcon Nine is vertical. Promise. What? I don't get it. <laughs> we we broke everyone and I I missed it completely. Nice one, Andrew. In Vandenberg. In oh, Vandenberg. Falcon Nine is vertical. Promise. <laughs> we, I did. Do you hear like, that? That's got, the Falcon. I promise it's the Falcon. No, no. I did say it wasn't Falcon Nine is vertical. I said I think because I I did that on the graphics one time when we couldn't see it. I said the Falcon Nine's on the pad or promise or like we promise the Falcon Nine is there. No, we I actually made put that on the air once. I need to see this. Now. Oh yeah, no, there is a launch where you could not see the rocket. Yes, yes. And and I actually in the graphics, I had a little graphic slide out said we said something like the Falcon Nine on the pad. We promise it's there or something like that. <laughs> Was this the Jason Three launch? I don't remember. It's a while ago, uh... and I think it might be the old graphics suite um, where it was like straight as opposed to curved. Oh yeah, like, yeah, it might be the Jason Three launch because I I went to that and I heard it. Yeah, I'm near positive. I've so... actually put that on the air somewhere. <laughs> I think I think I recall seeing that. No, I'm hunting for it. Mm. Andrew C four three seven said, "I know I took a pic of it. <laughs> it was because well, like, what else do you do, right? In that moment in time, you can't see anything. It's like, all right, well, we gotta have fun with it at least. This one? I don't know. Maybe. I- oh, oh, right. Sorry, you've seen so many. <laughs> I, I have. They all just blur together. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I have, and no, I don't know. Wow! Look at how few people are there. Uh, so, Dutta really wants me to. If, Star, if Starship has some sort of catastrophic failure that sets it back half a decade, does SLS become more successful? Oh, actually, that's a good question. Mm. That's why I can't push. If right, SLS nails this first flight, and then Starship. Uh, doesn't make it further than the Atlantic Ocean on its first flight, then Star uh, SLS will have a better success rate than Starship. That's how it will work. But that's not really the question, because Starship they're, is, they're built for different things. There's there's a very different engineering tact between the Space Launch System and Starship, right? So Starship is rapid design, rapid iteration, um, fail early, fail often, right? So mm-hmm. you know. No. That's you can't how, do that with SLS. Move fast you, but and break not, stuff. That's not yeah. Move fast and break stuff. But like in testing, not in production, right? So learn yes. all the lessons now, and then we learn the lessons and cool. But space launch system was not designed that way. Space launch system was designed figure it all out on paper, figure it all out in simulations, do cr- cross every T dot, every I, make absolutely sure of everything, and mm-hmm. then put it together. Yes. Now, I, I'm not saying one is right or wrong. I'm just saying that they took very different approaches. Yes. So if and, it's a, I think it's a bigger deal if SLS doesn't have a successful mission on its first flight than, say, Starship, simply because of the engineering approach taken to get to this point. But also because of that engineering approach, I don't think SLS is going to fail. I, I really don't. I also think that because of the legacies of the companies involved, there would be no recovery from having an SLS fail, failure. Um, it would definitely be the biggest blow ever, I think. Where, I don't know. Whereas SpaceX fails all the time, and they, and they show it publicly. Yeah. and That's the culture if, with SpaceX. If yeah. it's a, so if it's a death blow for the space launch system, it's because of the fact that, that with taxpayer-funded things, people are not really big on their stuff blowing up. Well, They're a- much more okay with 
with privately funded blowing up. I mean, yeah, and there, I think that's a good, fair. There's a good portion of SpaceX's development that's te- that's taxpayer funded as well. Yeah, but people don't. People in general don't know that. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair. They analysis. choose not to see it. Sure, but I how, mean, how you get from I'm point not going to disagree B. with that either. So, yeah, no, I I think it. I don't disagree with NASA's approach. I'm just saying it's a different approach. It's not right or wrong. It's just different. And so because of that different approach, first off, I don't think we're going to see a failure of the space launch system. Yeah, I, don't I just, think so. I really don't. I don't think so either. I think we're also going to see a very conservative launch team. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not going anything, on that first day. Anything off at all, even in the slightest, they're not going. There's a bird downrange. There's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> bird within five miles. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's the image. Where does it say? It says live pad views. Falcon 9 is vertical. Promise. Where's? It says it in the lower right hand okay, corner. Okay, which launch was this, though? This was. Oh, I can't see it because it's covered up. It's the. Radar uh, Sat Constellation. Radar Sat, yeah. So. <laughs> That hit air. That was live. Oh, boy. Am I glad I did? That is one that I thought about going to, but I was like, no, I'm not going to this. Yeah. So, thank goodness. <laughs> I mean, that's just one where the control room's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> draw on the screen. That is brilliant. I yeah. can't believe I've never seen that before. Actually, I think an interesting show would be um, in, a, in a modern era, right, we've got, look, we've got Space Launch System now. Whether it's mm-hmm. right or wrong, we've got a lot more data now. We've got commercial space spinning up. We've got, there are commercial companies that potentially have the ability to build super heavy lift rockets reliably lower costs, you know, and then NASA has their pick. They can just choose whatever launch vehicle they want and go to the moon, go to Mars, wherever they want to go. Mm-hmm. So in that world where rockets are no longer the thing that they're, we're trying to figure out how to do, what does NASA do? Is it still rockets or does NASA do something else? Does NASA do the thing that no one else is working on? Do they figure out the lunar habitation? Do they figure out, um, uh, nuclear propulsion in space do they figure out I don't, I don't know what the answer is i feel like nasa is the entity that does the things that no one else can do yet Astri- mm-hmm. asterisk that should be doing the things that no one else has, can do yet i think there are certain parts of nasa that absolutely do that james webb space telescope mm-hmm. right yep. perfect recent per- mm-hmm. ish <laughs> recent and long <laughs> example. <laughs> Not the best, but it's still an example. Uh, how about flying a helicopter on Mars? Yeah. Right? Nobody like, else has done I, that. I, I feel like we, we can point to the space launch system and be like, rah, 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 but NASA is still doing really incredible things. And that's not to say that the space launch system isn't incredible, but in a, it took them so long to get here that everything changed from underneath them. I'd say NASA also helps out with things that, it, that may be familiar as well. Like NASA does a lot of work with uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to help out with their their space operations with their spacecraft. So yeah, it's it's not necessarily just like the things nobody else is doing. Sometimes there are assets like the GOES system, uh, the geostationary orbiting satellites. Yeah. Those ones. I can't. I, I lost it. I think this, um, I think but, this exceeds yeah. the scope of this show, right? This yeah. show is kind of like, hey, look, I made space Twitter angry. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> dive deeper. Yeah. Uh, um, but it was kind of, look, uh, st- space Twitter was very angry with me and very yeah. yelly. Um, but there was, I think there was some actually good conversation that came out of it. I was interested in a lot of it. Uh, and I think it made for a really good show. Like, I, I, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Um, go and, ahead. And you know what? I still want to watch it launch. Me too. Oh, yeah. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to clear it out. I'm, what, is my heart rate going to be higher for it or Falcon Heavy? I'm actually not anti-space launch system. I'm, really, I'm not either. I'm really excited for space launch yeah, system. It's going to cool. I fundamentally do believe, and this isn't me, like, so, again, this is not me stirring pots or anything. This is, honestly, I think more heavy lo- heavy lifters, more access to space is always better. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. We, we need to have these capabilities. This is going to be big awesome. Big rockets, the best rockets. Big big rockets. Yep. Are, well, now I we've think had, we need all the rockets. We need had, the small rockets and the big rockets. We've had multiple. But big rockets, the better rockets. No. <laughs> No, you need you need you need choice. Big need, rockets yeah. are great because you can put the small rockets within the payload fairing of the big rocket and really make it go. Okay, so, That's sage. 
and then, <laughs> and then a, a, a spin lunch yeet machine to <laughs> spit it out. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So I hijacked the entire show. We've been on the air for an hour. Jared, was there anything you wanted to talk about? Anything you got excited about this week other than my tweet? There were two things that I got excited about this week or the past, since our past show, which is that... That's uh, great to know. Ryan, was there anything you were... I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, first of all, uh, near cam on the James Webb Space Telescope is on and, and being put through its commissioning of phase. Of course, it's a James Webb story. Because it's finally happening. It's cool. It's getting rapidly cooled down and it, everything's Running going. on the air conditioning. Everything's, it, yeah, the really good air conditioning. Um, and everything's just going very good. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, 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 yeah, just, you know. Yeah, it's just everything's just going amazing with it. I just wanted, hang on, hang on, hold up. What possessed you to think that (laughs) knock on wood with the bill of your hat? Well, see, I was actually (laughs) aiming for the front of my head, but I kind of missed. Why not just knock on wood with your hat? You need a lot more when you need a lot more luck. So, like, you really need to fully commit to it. That's That's a big target. How did you miss? I did. I did. If only I had <laughs> some more some more funding and time, um, <laughs> I could have probably <laughs> gotten it done right. Um, so that, and then also uh, the uh, Ingenuity took its twentieth and its twenty first flight uh, on Mars uh, since our last show, uh, and uh, that's just amazing to me that we have a vehicle flying on Mars. And it was only supposed to last five flights, and here we are. We just had number 20 and number 21, and it's looking great. Once again, so. NASA doing amazing things. Yeah. That's, that's JPL, though. Yeah. JPL is NASA, star, star. Mm. <laughs> I said star, star. Mm. I said star, star. Mm. I don't even think star, star on that front. Sorry. Hey, there, there's... Because there, if you work at JPL, you're technically working for Caltech. You just do stuff and have some behavior. Anyways, nobody really knows that. Star, star. Star, star. It's just, yeah, it's just. (laughs) Triggered. (laughs) Thank you, Vax. Thank you. Oh, is this my next tweet? Is this my next tweet? Don't start pissing people off. Don't you. Oh, start. I've already done that. It's just a continuation. Don't do this, this, Jamie. (laughs) Don't do. Look in my eyes. Don't do this, Jamie. All right, Ryan. Hey. Um, the 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 biggest thing that excited me this week is that we got the NASA's funding. Basically, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but they're getting lots of money to do things. Twenty-four the, billion U.S. dollars. Can I have some of that? I don't know where that's going. Hopefully, it's going to good stuff. Well, at least <laughs> four billion. Money. Four point one of it's going to a launch. Uh, <laughs> uh, launch. <laughs> Too soon? A. Too soon? Too soon? <laughs> station primarily. Yo, yeah, oh, station. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. 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 We're, that's, I don't want to say that's evolving every day, but it, boy, does it feel like it is. Dada, did you have any final so. thoughts before we wrap up the uh, main part of the show? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Dada's spent. I, He's I, done. I, I mean, rabbit holes, man. Rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes fun to go down sometimes i don't know wait andy's saying a gofundme page for space launch system or nasa what what is the gofundme page for who's gofundme i don't know i would gofundme for nasa maybe that'd be hilarious all right that is our show i hope you all enjoyed it it was um you know as per all of our train shows an absolute train wreck and a lot of fun like i i wouldn't have these shows any other way i think the train wreck is what gives it character and uh, speaking of characters these are the people who help to uh actually make these shows happen week after week month after month uh if you would like to help support the shows of tomorrow financially and get your name in the show you can head over to youtube.com slash tmro slash join this is escape velocity it's the highest tier. You get your name in the show. You get your name in a bunch of different things. You get a bunch of different stuff. You we also have, it's it's really at every different level. So it's whatever you're comfortable contributing to the show. Anywhere from one dollar per month, which is far less than like a coffee, all the way up to I think the top tier. I think Escape Velocity is fifty dollars per month, uh, and and everything in between. 
and uh, it, it's pretty it's pretty fun. With Escape Velocity, you get access to the uh, Discord room and and direct you, access to us. And then you can see me doing shenanigans in the Discord. I was about room. to say <laughs> it's literally this like what this show is like twenty four seven. I'll walk three sixty five. I'll walk in, just just to see. I'll walk into the Discord room and I'll be like, let's light, <laughs> let's dro- let's drop this grenade. See what happens. Oh, that that was effective. <laughs> Jamie walks by and lights the curtains God. on fire. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, oh, I, do, train. I, I do it on Twitter too so thank you to everyone everyone whose name was up on screen for helping to make <laughs> these shows happen but by the way if, yeah. you can't, if you can't afford it like that's totally cool I, I get that but you yeah. know what would help is um, you know red is no go and yeah. if you look directly below this video you're going to see a red subscribe button if you haven't subscribed press that subscribe button make it turn gray so that you are go for I don't know I don't I don't know how to complete this and make this into a space thing, but make it's it good. go from make get that red off the screen so that we can launch space launch system That's and other bad. things. Red, is, red bad. is bad, and if we if you have a red subscribe button below here. That's that is bad, and that indicates that space launch system can't fly. Starship can't fly. Pick your favorite rocket; it can't fly because they are red. They are no go. So make yeah. make your favorite rocket go. Delta I, two can't Del- fly. Delta two can't fly. Oh shoot! <laughs> hit that hit that red subscribe button. Make it. Make it turn gray for go. <laughs> You're go for You're tomorrow. Go for tomorrow, exactly. You know, all right. I'm gonna work on that. I feel like I've I've got, hey, I've got the formula for something there, that right? Was, like, that was that was the loose bones of something. <laughs> yeah. It's the loose I bones of something. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> like yeah. we're gonna be, we'll make a stew out of it. We got the ingredients for a stew. We just don't know if they're all gonna go together. I feel like you got you got two weeks to conjure something from those bones. <laughs> it's definitely paleontology. You know, you've been watching a lot of Jurassic Park and whatever. <laughs> it's like back in the day, they used to think dinosaurs were like this and then it turns out no that was completely wrong they're actually like this they do hunt in packs <laughs> <laughs> clever girl <laughs> oh man uh oh wait hang on maddie someone push Matt. i'll push maddie's comment let's see what we got here <laughs> that's a good one very exciting very exciting that's a good one I like that one. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching and for sticking with us through all of it. And thank you for not being too angry at me as I throw grenades into space Twitter and oh, into just, the community. Just wait till the comments open up on this. Oh, yeah. It'll be fun. Well, you know, I will say that on Twitter, and especially when you know what I'm doing and you can see me doing it, I feel like people are a little more civilized. And I did word that poorly. And I didn't. Had I given the option yes. for it's nuanced, I think I still would have gotten the data I was looking for. And it would have taken some of the sting out of it. Yeah. And so I, I, I do agree. I, th- I think that could have been done yeah. quite, a, quite a bit better. But it was still fun. I would say, though, that the, the idea of, unfortunately, I proved what I set out to prove kind of happened. Which is? So, which is that it's, it's not, it's, there wasn't really a good debate to be had with it or discussion. Like, people are. We just talked for an hour really, and 20 minutes. No, you know what I'm, you know what I mean, though, which is that people couldn't, it wasn't nuanced. People were this or that Polarized. about it. Yeah. So, that, see, that's so. where I screwed up because there is nuance there. That, that and a, I didn't give them the option for nuance. That was a polarizing question. It yeah. was designed to be a polarizing question because I thought that that would push them into a, well, it's supposed to do this. And so obviously it's that. And, and it, it sh- I should have allowed the opportunity for nuance. So that's my screw up, but it's still yeah. made for a good but, show. But to be fair, in order to get data, you need polarization and not just... And Sometimes I think that this was a little I, ether, That's, an that's ether true for astronomy, too. You need polarization to get data. Sometimes. And for good driving glasses. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. very true. Very uh, for true. any of those 3D rides at Disney? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Polarization? That's right. Uh, you know what? Actually, this is a really good... <clears throat> This is a really good way to end the show. The conclusion yes. is space fans are passionate. And yes, you know what? I think I think my advice, yeah. not that anyone asked for it, but I'm going to give it anyhow to the entire space community <laughs> is um, your passion, like your passion is amazing and you should never lose your passion. But you should also not lose sight of uh, the other person on the other end of that screen. Yeah. And remember to yeah. always treat people as you wish to be treated. And be passionate, but be polite at the same time. Yeah. Because you should be the best example of humanity at all times. Because we are the ones, we are the ones that are going to explore the cosmos. We are the ones that are going to go to the moon. We are the ones that are going to go to Mars. We are the ones that are going to extend humanity 
into our next generations. And we should be the best example of humanity at all times, the absolute best. And um, it's just important to remember, um, yeah, remember to be kind to others, even even through your passion. Yep. On that note, thank you so much for watching. And oh, oh, hold up. I don't have the thing. Stall, stall, stretch. And we'll see stretch. you in two weeks. Two weeks.